What is up, my friends? Welcome to another video. This is a global economic report. We are gonna talk about the GCR. Yes, the global currency reset, the reserve currency reset, the global meltdown, I guess, if you wanna get uh, all prepper and end of the world-ish on, on it, then that would be what it would be called. But we are gonna talk about the big conversation that's happening behind closed doors and open in the public, depending on who you're following and, and what you're following. You might be seeing a lot of this. You might be seeing none of this. This might be brand new to you. If so, welcome to the conversation. We're gonna talk about the rolling out of the Basel III, which is occurring at the end of March. That's right, we are a week away from this finally being rolled out. And I'm gonna talk about many breadcrumb pieces that support, I guess, this story. Now this was created, well refined back in 2017, but this was created in response to the economic crisis that happened in 2007 to 2009, okay? Which actually, I say this often, but the whole thing started in 2006. And this has been revised over and over again, but let's look at this here, okay? If you haven't gotten a chance to read this, I'd suggest you download it. Otherwise, if you just want a quick little uh, crash course, then that's what this video is for. And we're gonna talk about some of the bigger pieces, obviously, too. Um, This is just talking about uh, banking reform. Uh, uh, to create a regulatory framework that supports what they call the real economy. Okay, so three big pieces. In finalizing these reforms, the committee was guided by three overarching principles. First, the committee is firmly committed to its mandate of strengthening the regulation, supervision, and practices of banks worldwide with the purpose of enhancing financial stability. A banking system that is resilient will be able to support the real economy and contribute positively to sustainable economic growth over the medium term. Second, the committee actively seeks the views of stakeholders when developing standards. For these reforms, the committee conducted an extensive consultation process with a wide range of stakeholders. I'd love to see who these stakeholders were. I've looked through this and I couldn't find any of those, but I'd have to dig deeper into the Basel committee itself, who's paying it, who's funding it. And we could probably figure out exactly whose viewpoints have been pulled to gather this information, which that would actually be important to go another layer uh, deep into the research of this. Third, the committee conducted a comprehensive and rigorous assessment of the impact of these revisions on the banking system and the wider macro economy. As a result of this assessment, the committee focused on not significantly increasing overall capital requirements. This is the quantitative impact study. You can download this as well. This is reflected in a design calibration and transitional arrangements discussed below. Now, the transitional arrangements, I really wanna bring up as an important point because I don't think this is gonna happen overnight. And a lot of people are thinking it will. A lot of gold bugs are thinking that immediately that this is gonna just jack up and skyrocket rocket the price of gold it might but here's the most interesting thing and if you watch the one of the last videos that I uploaded uh, I talk about this specifically gold is actually now looked at as a zero risk weight okay there's even a 20% risk weight that will apply to cash items in a process of collection but there's no matter what as long as it's real gold that's either being held or in transit of being held it is a zero risk. So there's less risk on gold than there is fiat. That along with some other conversations that have been occurring has got people thinking that, are we going back to a gold standard? Is is this whole thing about to shift? There is a couple different ways they could play this. Now, cryptocurrencies, I wanna note, cryptocurrencies in any way I could not find in this document at all. So they are still not being recognized, they're still not being looked at in this document, which makes total sense. But gold, silver, platinum, and palladium are all listed under the commodity section of this report as well. It's only a hundred and something pages. It's not It's not that bad if you wanna read it. It's not that deep of talk to where if you're not an economist, you won't understand it, okay? It's pretty easy to follow. Gold is now being upgraded, okay? It's never been looked at as a zero risk weight before and it's still criticized. It's actually kind of obnoxious. I was trying to think quickly of a correlation or um, an analogy to make, but I, I can't think of one, but gold has been around for a long time. It has multiple values, not just in the jewelry space, People often discredit this. Fake economists and talking head mainstream media uh, outlets often are downplaying the significance of gold. Now, if this was true, we would not see 2017 being one of the largest growth years, 74% of gold purchasing by central banks and countries and governments. That would not have happened. Uh, Russia and China continue to be huge gold buyers. Russia apparently just bought 31 tons last month of gold. That's a lot. There's an estimated somewhere between 187,000 and 193,000 total tons of gold in circulation. All the gold that's ever been mined is still actually in circulation to this day, like 99% of it.
it. Uh, so not much of it has been lost or destroyed. It's just continually recycled, which makes it an actual asset. And now we've got all these conversations happening about a gold standard. So there's a few different ways I see this going. You got the IMF talking about a dual currency system, which is essentially a, a glorified bail-in. 10 to 30% of your money gone overnight. But at least it's not as ugly as Cyprus in 2012 to where the banks shut down and they open back up and say, hey, we're gonna steal money out of your bank accounts and tough luck, okay? It's for the good of the people, good of the government. Because you trust the government and we don't want the government to fall either, so give us 30% of your money. That's essentially what happened then. This would be a lot prettier and people wouldn't realize that that's what's actually occurring. So we've got this e-money component. So what is that gonna be? We've got the IBM deal recently with them teaming up with Stellar Lumens blockchain and six banks starting to build off of that blockchain to offer some sort of stable coin. So we could see a G20 or greater uh, amount of countries that are creating their own state-backed cryptocurrency or stable cryptocurrency. Turkey and Iran are both looking into a gold-backed currency or gold-backed cryptocurrency. China's also a big player in gold. China and Russia have created the SCO, which is another organization similar to the UN, but it seems to be mostly now focused on the One Belt Road Initiative, Silk Road Initiative, which the US seems to be completely X'd out of that whole thing, which that's just a trade route for China, from going through Asia to the Middle East and into Europe. That could prove to be a really big pivotal point here. So we're gonna see either this state-backed cryptocurrency and in a gold-backed fiat, or maybe a gold-backed cryptocurrency, there's gonna be two. There's gonna be fiat, because it can't phase it out completely. They're gonna have to keep that in the mix and, and fizzle that out slowly, because they want cash off the streets so that Uncle Sam can get his money, and there's no money laundering and there's no way to hide money. So they're gonna try and slowly get cash off the streets and they recognize the power of digital currencies because with distributed ledger technology and with just how that works, you would have, essentially once you found out somebody's address, you'd be able to map a person to all their wallet addresses and there's no more hiding. The full transaction history is all right there. That would completely change taxes, accounting, that would change everything with how money is tracked and it would make it easier for the government once all the wallet addresses were uncovered. So an anonymity would become a huge thing. VPN sales would go through the roof, I think and new multi-layered hiding approaches would have to be created, which I think they're already being worked on. That's safe to assume. IMF, money people don't know this, they answer to nobody. They're an independent organization that just so happened to rise in power and become this authority for banking across the entire planet. They're not held accountable by any government. And they, their board and their team that create the IMF is all central bankers. Again, no accountability at all, and they are the third largest gold holder in the world. I was just looking at the stats. Um, you can download those off of World Gold Council, I believe, and they are number three. They're a big player in this. They're the ones presenting this dual currency system, and believe it or not, they've actually already, if you watch my video on the SDR, the SDR was supposed to be a global reserve currency that they tried to really push out in both 2013 and 2016. Jim Edwards talked a lot about this in 2016. The globe, the SDR was a basket of fiat currencies that they wanted to roll out. It still exists to this day, just updated in March. So we've got that piece. There's so much going on here. I just, I'm trying to figure out, is this gonna be a global thing or are is the US dollar just gonna be dumped as the global reserve currency and something else is gonna emerge? Something that maybe China and Russia has been working on or is it gonna be everybody? So they just kind of like close the doors for a day and then they flick the switch and this is the change. Myself and many others believe that this is gonna happen in quarter two of this year. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be a big dramatic change or if it's gonna be this subtle change. This Basel III is starting to take effect already but it's officially being launched and rolled out at the end of this month. This should be interesting, but if you're not already aware of this, you should be, okay? So a lot of people are stocking up, starting to stock up on gold if they weren't already. Personal gold sales were also up, I believe at least 4% last year. Okay, so outside of jewelry usage. So a lot of people have been seeing this and because of the economic uncertainty, they are falling back on what they, what they believe will work and always be there, which is gold and silver. You know, cryptocurrency seem to be a new rising big player. But there's some contradictory information here too because if this was really gonna happen and we're going back to a deflationary currency, why is quantitative easing continuing? Quantitative easing is a part of the inflationary model that we've got. Now, you can assume that the governments will never give up inflation. 
they want that forever now. So how are they gonna make the deflationary currency of gold or gold-backed currency or a cryptocurrency which has a maximum amount, a maximum supply, and making it naturally a deflationary currency? How are they gonna make that work with an inflation model? Maybe they do that with, uh, they make it a mining-based, just like uh, proof of stake, proof of work, which that mining reward is essentially an inflation. Maybe they just do it something like that, and that's how this is all supported. Um, I don't know. But uh, quantitative easing is continuing for at least six more months, totaling $210 billion. The US is $22 trillion in debt right now. There's some people who think that they're gonna try and wash the debt completely, and everybody just starts over because it's not really, it's not real anyways, it's just kind of a propped up number. And then there's others that believe that they're gonna just try and wash it through some sort of money grab. The government shutdown is questionable to me. What actually happened during the government shutdown? Because there was all these meetings still going on, bankers were still meeting, bankers were still talking about this, so was that the time that they took, that three, four weeks, to create now what they're about to roll out in quarter two? I think yes. And that's just all my opinion though. It's either gonna be everyone's doing it or the, the US is just gonna get ditched, have like the global elite split and they aren't in agreement anymore. And so China and Russia are out there on their own and they're gonna do their own thing and take over because with the amount of gold reserve they have, they could do that. They could roll out something new. Maybe they're, are they working with the IMF? Is it all just gonna be surpassed and these two countries just do it all on their own? I don't know because they've got organizations outside of the IMF that they can leverage to make this all work because of the Silk Road. A lot of questions in my mind right now. And I'm sure I'm not the only one uh, that's thinking about these things. But one thing you can be sure of is that gold has just gotten an upgrade. And so if you're sitting on zero gold, uh, you might wanna pick some up just as a hedge. And uh, if you're sitting on some cryptocurrency, I think that's, I think it's really simple. Everyone's looking for like the one thing to park all my money. And they wanna sit around and argue about gold is better than this and silver is better than that. But what if this, then just get that. How about we just get some of a bunch of different things so that way no matter what happens we can we will win and that's like the dummies approach i think and within that you could get way more specific and just sit on what you know is going to be the fallback or the reserve gold silver real assets which that falls into primarily real estate cryptocurrencies cash is okay but if, you know falls victim to inflation if you sit on it long enough so maybe a little bit of cash in there too if that's your thing. But you see how it's like, we need to expand the conversation, expand the argument. It can't just be arguing over which one thing is the best. That no longer works. That strategy used to work, which is why baby boomers want to sit around and have that argument all day long. But those of us who've been paying attention realize that that's no longer the conversation. The conversation is getting a few things that you know will shore up your safety and your freedom and your sovereignty no matter what occurs. Because it's like, okay, gold and silver, put all my money there. What if they do capital controls? What if they do illegal seizing? What do you got then? Okay, I'll put all my money in cryptocurrency. You see how there's no right answer here. It's like, let's get a little bit of this piece over here, which is the precious metals. Let's get a little piece of the cryptocurrencies. Let's get a little piece of real assets on the ground, real things, uh, land ownership, property rights, you know, those sorts of things, real estate, housing, and that's it. Okay, my friends, that's all I've got for you in this video. If you like this video, if you wanna support what we're doing, just click the thumbs up, it's that simple. Gets this video out, more people get to see it, and uh, spreads the word. And if you found this video through related videos, a playlist, something like that, awesome, welcome to the channel. This is what we do, this is what we talk about. Global currency, we talk about all this crazy stuff going on, uh, minus so much of the deep, dark conspiracy theory talk. So if you like this, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification, and uh, we've got more great videos coming soon. You can check out links underneath this video, support us in other ways if you're keen. If you wanna go ahead and say something, then place a comment underneath this video and uh, I will check that out later on. All right, that's it for now, my friends. Bye.